If you're like me and you are a little bit addicted to collecting art supplies, this video may be for you or maybe not. Um, whatever it is, uh, this video I'm going to be sharing with you all my favorite watercolor supplies that I use regularly. Um, there will be paper and brushes and paint and some other extra things that I really cannot do without uh, when I paint. Let's get started straight away. Let's start with brushes. I'm kidding. That was quite crazy. Uh, the truth is, I really do have just these couple of brushes that I would say that I use most often. All right. I'm going to just group them in a sensible way and let's go through each and every brush that I use most often. The first brush that I would say I use most often these days is this one here, my 3 quarter inch flat um, by Princeton Heritage. I have two other flats that I alternate as well, half inch and one inch, all depending on the size of uh, florals and the size of the paper. Okay, the other brushes I use a lot are the silver black velvet uh, round okay, and these are actually mixed synthetic and natural hair. The rest I have are all synthetic actually. And I first bought the set that comes with a 4, 8, and 12, I think. <laughs> 4, 8, and 12, and I've linked this set in the description below. Um, and then along the way, I bought the 6 and 10 as well because I went to this art store in Singapore and I was just feeling like I needed to buy something. So I ended up having plenty of these brushes. And once you use them, it's seriously game changer, man. Like um, it glides so smoothly. It creates the really, really most beautiful uh, florals. I must say these are a bit pricier. Uh, so if you want to start out, you can just start with the Princeton Heritage. Or another um, Princeton line that's quite affordable as well is the Princeton Snap. This is actually probably the most affordable and it really has a nice snap. So round brushes, you can um, use these. So I also love my Princeton Heritage round, all right? And I've got a ton of sizes. Seriously, I have one, two, six, eight, 10, 12, 16. But I think the ones I use most often is six, 12, and 16. Um, they're your standard round brush, which is a bit sturdier and snappier than these. So I make sure I have these uh, on standby if I need to get a, you know, a sturdier hand. All right, other brushes I use occasionally. Uh, let's do this one. It's a liner brush, which is a size one Art Basics golden liner. And this is beautiful to create long, thin lines uh, for veins. And then I have a filbert brush. I have this one, which is a De La Rowney, three quarter inch, and it says oval here, but filbert, oval, sometimes they just use different names. This also is a really lovely brush to make interesting petal shapes. And then a slightly smaller one here, Art Basics. Of course, I have a ton of other more <laughs> brushes here, as you can see. Um, but you know what, I don't use them as often. I just bought them and tried them and they're good to stand by. For example, this one here is also a Princeton Heritage one and a half inch flat. And gradually when I want to start painting bigger, I think this will come in really handy. Otherwise, those are my brushes. Next, let's talk about paper. At the beginning, you might want to start using cellulose paper. However, I don't use cellulose paper anymore because over the years, accumulated lots of paper that's 100% cotton. And 100% cotton paper is really the paper that performs the best, the most predictable, and your results would just be so much more uh, satisfying. And I've come to a point in my painting journey where I just really do not want to waste time on materials that won't give me the best result because time is precious. So yeah, let's go through all the different brands that I've tried. This is not going to be an in-depth review about paper. I might do another video of that one day, but just to briefly show you my favorite brands, I've got Academy Watercolor Pad. This is probably the most affordable. I buy it off AliExpress. 
see where you can get it in your region. Um, I put all this in the Amazon link below. And of course, Arches is probably one of the most expensive brands, but I found this uh, pad quite affordably at a discount in Singapore. Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press is also a brand that I use. I do like it. It's very similar to Arches. This Canson Heritage is also pretty nice. I only have this one pad that I've bought to try and I'm quite happy with it. Ooh, this is one of my latest favorite ones, Saunders Waterford. Um, it is a slightly more off-white and uh, I do enjoy painting on it. And I found it in my local art store for quite a good price. So yeah. All right, Fabriano Artistico is perhaps my favorite watercolor paper brand so far that I have uh, been using. I'm really happy with it. This is a brand new pad that I bought from Singapore because it's so expensive here in Australia. I found it at an art store. Um, definitely one of my favorite. And finally, this one, Claire Fontaine. Again, possibly one of the more affordable brands. It's got the least texture. Uh, they're all cold pressed, by the way. Look out for cold press. Cold press is when there's a bit of texture, a bit of roughness, not too much. And that's my favorite for uh, painting florals. So yeah, these are all the brands that I have and I've used and I probably have tried even more. But these are the ones I've shown you. Uh, you can go and try that I recommend. They're all pretty good. And 100% cotton cold press is what I love. Let's move on to paints, okay? so. <sighs> I've done a whole video on 16 of my favorite colors that I use in my watercolor palette and I'll link it here in the card. But this is just to generally show you the amount of tube paints I've accumulated over the years. It's not terribly uh, heaps, but what I've done is I put, sorry, this should be here. I put one, uh, this box are my warm colors and this box is my cold, cool colors so that when I need to look for them, it's easily found. I buy my tube paints and then I squeeze it into my palette here, leave it to dry overnight and this is the palette that I use for pretty much all my paintings. So uh, what brands do I use? Um, so many brands really. I use PwC Shin Han, Winsor & Newton, Rim Brand, Holbein, uh, Mission Gold. Um, yeah, I've linked them all in my description below, the favorite 16 colors that I use most often. And I hope, uh, yeah, if you have any questions about it, I, this is a lot, all right? But not as much as some other artists. I've seen some artists that have like a tub of yellow, a tub of orange, a tub of green. So this is pretty okay, I must say. But let's just say I have enough paint to last me a while. Another palette which I uh, use uh, occasionally is this one here, it's a Japanese brand. It's uh, Kurutake, and um, what I love about it is that the, it's quite affordable. It's not too expensive for this, this much paint, and you can, find, you can buy them in different uh, sets. So this one has got one, two, three, four, five, six, 18 colors, and I believe you can buy like the 24 color, 32 color set. But I find that this is enough for me to get going, and this, really create some really beautiful vibrant paints. So if you're a beginner and you're looking to get just get a nice vibrant set of um, paints, you can try this brand. It's really, really popular. All right, so here I'm going to share with you my liquid watercolor. Um, I've had a lot of fun experimenting with them and I have a couple of different brands. Dr. PH Martins alone, they're two range. There's the Radiant Concentrated Watercolor and then there's Hydrus and there's a difference between the two. Hydrus is light fast, meaning it doesn't fade and uh, Radiant, it, it fades, okay? And so basically Radiant is more for people who maybe scan their art and you're not going to ever put it up on display or anything but if you want to, you know, sell your art, gift it Hydras is the way to go. I have one Aqua Drop from Schmincke as well. I tried that, it's pretty good. And a De La Rainey Aquafine, also pretty good. 
Um, I do have some Eco line. This is the white one in here, but I'm not a big fan of the Eco line range in general. I feel that the, it's a bit transparent and vibrant in a very strange way. So yeah, these are all the liquid watercolor that I have. I use them occasionally, mainly just to, for fun and to try and to get more bleeds. So yeah, my liquid watercolor set. Oh yeah, I just want to also show you how I use my liquid watercolour. I have this palette here, which I got from an art store in Singapore. I try to find one similar and link it in the description below. And what I do is, um, I have a swatch here, so it rem it's just reminding me what colour goes in which square. And I just fill it up with a dropper here. So this one is Magenta Aquafine. And probably goes right here. And then when I want to use it, I just spray it down with a spray bottle and use it. And then when I don't, I just cover it up so that it doesn't get too dried up. But um, as you can see, there's old paint there, which definitely can still be used. So just activating it with the spray bottle will help to get it all liquidy again. And have lots of fun times painting okay i'm going to share with you two extra palettes that i use on occasion this one here is very cool it's a neon color set and it's got six gorgeous bright super neon colors i linked um the this i'll link to the the product in my description below it's lumi accent color and this one is um gold and silver shimmer set, which is the same brand as the other Japanese brands, Kurutake. Um, just so useful if you want to play around with shimmer and gold. You can even buy them individually if one runs out. Uh, I have to probably fill this one up soon. But yeah, these two are just fun things to have if you want to experiment and play in watercolour. Another essential thing I need while painting is my little book stand. So this one is just a cheap plastic one I got from the uh, Office Works, which is an Australian stationery uh, office, you know, supply store. But get whatever you can find. I'm sure they have more beautiful wooden ones. And I like this because it's got a little like clip thing to hold the book open. So for example, if I'm using a chunky book like this one, the Book of Flowers, and I want, I need it to open at a specific page. This really works very well. So if without it, it'll just flip around. Lovely. All right, look, made a little face. <laughs> okay, in watercolor, we need water. I have two transparent jars that I got from the local uh, charity shop and just get whatever you can. Uh, you can get some really cute ones, people use some ceramic ones, but I like transparent because I can actually just really see how muddy and how dirty the water gets. I use two jars just because uh, it saves me trips to the to the sink. Some people use one jar for warm colors and the other one for cool colors. Some people wash their brush twice, like first in the dirty water and then in clean water. I'm seriously not organized enough to even uh, work that way. So I have two mainly because I just go in there, keep washing and both gets really gross and muddy real quick. And then a little paper towel or a cloth if you have one, just to use it to dab your brushes when you paint. So you sometimes, even doing this and getting rid of water is not enough. You need to maybe soak up a bit of water. So it's mainly for water control or to just wipe off lots of pigment if you want to change colors. There's one more tool which I need when I paint and it's this, um, either this or this. And what I use it for mainly is when I am uh, painting on a block like this and a block of paper is glued on all sides and the reason why they're glued on all sides is so that the paper won't warp when you use a lot of water. So actually this is my favorite one which um, it's basically a palette knife that we used to mix when you're doing acrylic or oil and just showing you how it smoothly just slides around this block to remove that last painting that you did. 
And this one here comes with the Academy watercolor paper actually. So I'm going to show you how this one works on this painting that I also just did. Whoops. So this is also a block but it's come off of that bit there. But let's see. I find this one just maybe a little bit more scary to use because it's not completely flat. Uh, look how it's curved. But it's cute, isn't it? It's like a leaf shape, leaf colour. So satisfying to do that. Voila! Yep, you need one of these if you're using blocks. Palettes. Let's talk about palettes for a moment. You, there's so many palettes you can buy on the market. Uh, I've tried a few and started out with something like this. It's very simple um, plastic palette that you can buy. I believe it costs like less than $2 online um, and it works pretty well. It's plastic and with plastic palettes, you do need to maybe use it a couple of times so that it doesn't pool. Um, I'm sure you can Google uh, plastic palettes on, on YouTube and you'll know what I mean. Eventually, I worked my way up to this beautiful Shin Han watercolor palette. And I think this one has, uh, let me see, there's 12, 24, 24 colors, uh, 24 well. And I used this one for a long, long time. I actually really like the size of this one. It's quite compact. To be honest, I actually should one day maybe uh, go back to this size because it fits really nicely on my desk. But for the moment, I am using this one here is also the Shinhan watercolor palette and I believe it is 34 wells? I don't know, so many wells. I've linked it in the description below and what I love about this palette, the Shinhan one, is um, it's got quite deep wells and it's slanted so I really can get my big brushes in there. Alright, maybe not the one inch one but at least the three quarter inch one uh, really fits well. Like for example this one and uh, I can use this to sort of scrub some water away and although I don't have any dividers on this palette as opposed to maybe this one has this one has some divider I've eventually over the years just gotten used to this and I, I can somehow manage all my colors pretty well without the dividers um, I don't even mix colors that often. Sometimes I go directly from my paint to the to the to the paper, and I mix it on the paper. Um, and honestly, it's not that bad if some colors do mix up because then you get more of a natural uh, look to your paintings and more harmonious. Anyway, very very important the spray bottle. You need the spray bottle to spray down your palette before you use them so that it activates the paint. I used to have a much bigger one where I just maybe needed to spray five times but I don't know where that's gone. So this one, just a bit of finger, thumb <laughs> exercise here to really get it wet, all right? Just get it really, really wet. You won't regret it. Spray bottle. Last but not least, one of my favorite things to have while I paint are my floral reference books. I have here three reference books that I really use a lot. I also have a bunch of vintage floral books. Um, there's just too many to name. But if you're interested to know more about these three, I have a video just featuring all the beautiful paintings and pictures and even paintings that I've created from these floral books. So yes, definitely you need something to refer to. Sure, you can use the internet, but nothing beats an actual physical book to look at. Well, there you have it. Uh, all the supplies that I use most often uh, when I'm painting. Remember, you don't have to get everything all at once. It took me a couple of years to accumulate this much. And the most important thing you have to remember is that don't be afraid to use your supplies. The truth is, you know, um, the only way you can waste supplies is not using them. If you're using them, you're not wasting them. I hope you enjoyed this video and please like my video if you enjoyed it. Comment, let me know if there's anything in this collection that you feel um, you really like or it's missing. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.